Hey everyone, it's Joe Carroll. Excited to be with you guys today because I get to announce a new product. So all of us know the name Audioscape. I know it very well. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> it looks like seven pieces of hardware in just my control room. And that's what we know them for is, is great recreations of, of you know prized gear. Uh, but today we're going to launch something new and that is the XL305R. If you look at the screen with me here, you'll see two different looks, and I'll explain that. So you probably know they have the 305 in their product line. Now, I don't have it. I, ha I have tried it at NAM and it was awesome, uh, but that's about my only experience with it. And if you look at the top of the screen, that's what it looks like. You know, this is the one that they modeled after, the after their own hardware. So it's, uh, you know, attempting to be one for one pretty much with the hardware that they make. But if you know anything about this unit, it is based on a unit from the 80s and that, see that look down below that looks different and a little more old uh, looking. That is the, uh, it's the same plugin. You will see by flipping this switch right here, we get a different look, a little older look, and that's the one on the bottom. Both of these are part of the same plugin and they have unique sonic differences. As far as spring reverbs go, this one is unique because it's, it has 12 tuned springs that are all equally tempered. So it creates a very unique sound that can be very spring like or uh, almost. Uh, plate-like, for a lack of better terms, because I remember playing with it uh, at, at the trade show. But that said, I got this plugin installed, have had no experience with it whatsoever. We thought it would be fun to just open it up and start going and creating presets uh, as we found things that we like, and then include them into the product when you download it uh, to demo or purchase. So let's just have a good time and let's just start uh, dialing some stuff in. I've got a song here that uh, was on my mind recently because I just I filmed a video for a company on a on a new channel strip, and it reminded me of this incredible song from my friend Kaylee Bishop. She's an awesome artist. I'm still working with her. And this song is so cool, I feel like I need to use it in some more Produce Like a Pro videos, uh, maybe a mixing chorus or a breakdown or something, because it's incredible. Let me give you just a little sample of what we're dealing with. Uh, it's, you'll notice it's completely dry, but otherwise just these channel strips just sound fantastic on it. Here we go. Baby, let me be a bunny tree. Fantastic song, great recording, great vocal, just everything about it is awesome. So we're going to have a good time. Let's just work our way left to right, why don't we? So let, let's go up to the snare drum, and let's uh, let's dial something in here. And I've got the, this is the new version of the 305, okay? So let's just listen. Okay, that's pretty long. Let's check this one out. Okay, I kind of like the shorter, the shorter sound of that one for this. Now let's adjust the input. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna stay on 100% wet because I'm I'm gonna use them in a send return manner. So we're always gonna keep this mix full on. Uh, but let's turn the input down, drive the springs, drive that uh, you know that that analog portion of the device a little less hard and get a little less of the spring like sound. Okay, cool. Now, we have a four band EQ here, as you can see. So what would we do? Well, let's take 150 down a little bit. Let's add some 2K, why not? Let's add a little top end too, I think that's 6K. Okay, I have two snares here going. I have the sample as well as the primary snare. Let's use less of it on the sample. Okay, now let's group the drums together, solo them up and see what we got. You know what, I'm gonna turn that room off just so we're not hearing the room ambience that I recorded that day. We're just hearing just the close mics with the overheads and that way we know what ambience we're hearing from uh, the audio escape version and the, uh, the room are two separate things. That length actually fits this song really well. We have that, that explosion of 
that dies right before the next downbeat. I like that. Okay, so what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to save this as, save settings as, we're going to call this Joe C. Drum 1. Here we go. Now, I want to hear this on those, there's a big place up here in the bridge breakdown area where the toms are very much a thing. Okay, so now let's send the toms to that get a feel for what that sounds like. Now let's take the drum set off of grouping and let's hear just the toms. Okay, yeah, so I thought I was going, I was a little too heavy handed, but nonetheless, let's check it out. I actually really, really dig that. That's a cool sound. So um, let's keep that as a preset. Drums number one. Let's do something a little different. Let's go. Let's go kind of extreme here. Uh, let's go back to the newer 305R, and and let's go a little more extreme. Okay. So let's 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 go brighter. Okay, let's see. That's 600 cycles. Let's just crank it to see what it does. Okay, I'm going to go clockwise just to go super springy, just for fun. Let's hear it. Okay, for drums, yeah, I definitely like it on the uh, on the left side. Okay, let's save this as Josie Drum Two. Now I want to hear those back to back. Okay, very cool. I want to hear those in the mix now with those toms. Okay, I can see that being effective, this one right here, I can see that being effective more on ballads where we want a, a longer decay or follow this with a gate and you know that, that tightens it up a little uh, a little sooner, but uh, nonetheless, uh, that was fun. I mean, you know what? A harmonic would be really cool because there's going to be no that's going to be dry as a bone. So you know, sometimes electric guitars have a little delay or a little reverb printed into it. So uh, this would be something we can solo up and know exactly what we've got. So let's bring up the spring send that I have here. Bring up the three hundred five unbypass it. Let's start sending a little level in. Let's find a great place that the harmonica looks like he's doing something exciting. There we go. It makes me want to sit down and watch an episode of Roseanne, if anybody remembers that TV show. All right, so let's feed a little level into it. Oh, that... Now, okay, so... That's pretty much perfect. I, I love spring reverbs on harmonica. I know we don't use a harmonica a lot in, uh, we don't use it enough in modern music outside of the blues and some swampy Americana, but man, I love it. I almost wouldn't change a thing about that as far as the preset goes, uh, but let's, you know, because uh, we're trying to get get to learn the, the product a little bit, let's switch to the older, shorter, regular 305. That's, that's pretty cool, guys. Let, let, let's play with EQ just because we can. Okay, that's kind of cool because it, th that two K brings out like a lo-fi. Um, you know, something about some of this kind of music. You almost want to hear a little bit of that amp simulation in the harmonica, even if you're not running through an amp. Uh, you know, there's just that, that visual picture of a guitar amp. Be, you know, with the being played 
uh, the harmonic can be even played through a guitar amp, and that's kind of what I'm getting here by boosting 2K. That's cool. Let's check that in the mix. Okay, what I want to do is I'm going to turn the input down and see how we affect the sound. That's actually going to be better. It's a little less dense. It's, it's not quite as um, diffuse, uh, which is going to, I think it's going to help our cause as far as getting this part to fit inside of a mix. So let's save this preset right here. Yeah, that's pretty daggone sweet. We're going to call this Josie, uh, what are we going to call it? Harp, I guess. Harp one. Awesome. Okay, let's go to some of these other electric parts. I know the slide guitar was printed with quite a bit of spring reverb already in it. That one. That's going to be a great candidate. Let's let's go ahead and send a little of this spring send to that one that we call, we just aptly named the Harp One, and kind of see what it sounds like, okay? Pretty cool. That's, I mean, when I think of a, of sending a, a you know more staccato guitar part like this one is to a spring rever reverb, that's the sound that I have in my head. But let's put a little let's put a little uh, top end in it. Let's just see what that sounds like with a little six K, making it a little brighter. Because I, I can already tell that the older version of the three hundred five, this one. Is a little darker than the other one. So I, I, even though I don't use a lot of high end in my reverbs a lot of times, I'm wondering if, uh, you know, within a dense mix, if, if that's going to help the reverb uh, pop just a little. Now let's take out everything below 150. All right, let's hear it in the mix. I dig that. I dig that. Now, for grins and giggles, let's switch over to the 305, a modern version of it, and let's hear it. Yeah, I, I like that. I like this more modern sound on this particular thing. So let's flatten out, flatten out that top end just a little bit. Yep. All right, perfect. Now let's name this Josie... Elec rhythm. Let's see if I can spell rhythm. Don't laugh at me, friends. Okay. All right. So. Okay, I need to turn it down just a little. That's about all we're going to need. All right, let's check out let's check out our acoustics. I would be tempted to make that guy, you know, within a mix, be really, really dry. Uh, that that uh, resonator guitar, but you know, we're having fun here, so let's let's just play with it. Man. A spring reverb on a resonator guitar is another one of those things where it's just like, it's, it's money. Okay, now let's hear the vintage piece. I, I think I like the modern. I think I like it. Let's see if adding a little 2K nasty to it is a good thing. Okay, now let's take the input to the cleaner. Uh, let's drive the tank uh, less hard.
I'm leaning towards, you know, right, right around nine o'clock. And I think because this song is just so busy, I can see songs where driving the springs harder, getting longer sustained, denser sustained would be the the right thing. I think it's probably because of this song, you know, I mean, let's face it, every eighth note is taken. It's all spoken for. So I'm, you know, kind of leaning towards this side. Uh, but that said, let's hear that. And let's let's mute the two the two lead elements, the slide guitar and the harp, just so we can focus more on the rhythm elements. Honestly, with with reverb on that, a little reverb on that one guitar, I wouldn't put any on the acoustic if I was mixing this right now. But you know what? We're having fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this as Joe C. What are we gonna call it? Let's call it uh, let's call it acoustic one because the resonator is still an acoustic guitar. Now let's create an acoustic two based on this patch. We'll mute the reverb on the res. Bring this one up. Okay, now let's hear the the old three hundred five. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to factory default here. I think I like the spaciousness of the uh, new version, the 305R. Okay, let, let's brighten it up just a little bit. A again, it's probably because this mix is just so dense. Okay, let's, I'm gonna crank 600 just to see what, what that's doing. That would be really cool on some electric patches. Uh, give you more bot, more sustain in that body. Okay, so dry and then with reverb. A little too much, but that's a cool patch. turn the input down just a little more. Okay, cool. Let's save that as Joe C Acoustic. You know what? We haven't even touched B3. A B3 is a thing that a lot of times in a mix, even if a lot of other things are dry, we get we kind of put a lot of reverb on the B3 to set it back behind um, the listeners a little bit. So what we're going to do here, we're going to bring up our patch called Spring, and we're going to hear that on the B3. Did I bring up? Oh, yeah, I'm hearing it. Very nice. Let's get it real springy. Okay, let's hear the old version. Ah, uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get rid of that um, that EQ bump that I've got going on and and, and re-examine. That's the tail. Now the regular three hundred five. Okay, definitely the longer three hundred five. Let's dry it out just a little bit as far as the input uh, drive. Let's turn down the low end a little bit, and let's turn down the high end to 6K. Okay, so now we have a real mid-range heavy kind of wash in the background. Nice. Okay, let's call that a Joe C. We'll call it pad. Because that would that would be good on I think uh, a lot of sustaining uh, keyboard elements. Okay, one more thing. Let, let's try Miss Kaylee on her lead vocal. Let's bring her reverb up and hear her. Baby, let me be a money tree. I can get you what you want. I'll give you. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool right there. Uh, let's hear the three hundred five R though. Baby, let me be a money tree. Okay, so on this song, I know, now, granted, we can do some EQing, but my initial instinct is the sound of the vintage unit. <laughs> 
Baby, let me be up on a tree. I like the shorter sound, and I almost like the, the, the little bit of lo-fi grit that it has, where the 305R is a little more classy sounding. Th- this is a little less classy, and I think it really fits the, the aggression of this song. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Man, I don't know that we need to do anything to the EQ, but but nonetheless, let's let's take out a little 600, okay? Baby, let me be up on a tree. And some 150. Baby, let me be up on a tree. That's too much 150. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Let's hear it in the mix, okay? Baby, let me be up on a tree. I can get you what you want, I'll give you. That's pretty doggone cool. Uh, I'm going to keep that one. I love that. JC, we're going to call this Vox. One. Let's come up with a different vocal sound just so we can give you more presets here. Baby. Let, you know what? Let's go back to the 305R and let's find something that is really fitting for that, okay? Baby, let me be up on a tree. Let's go, let's go way too much just for fun. Baby, let me be. <laughs> but I'm gonna use way, I'm gonna send way less of it um, just because the input uh Drive also affects what we're hearing. Baby, let me be up on a tree. So I can hear how that just by turning, you know, the the input uh, level that we send into it down versus the input of the actual unit, uh, we can actually get some pretty elegant sounding uh, sustain. Check that out. Baby, let me be up on a tree. That's actually pretty doggone nice. So let's keep that one. As Joe C, let's call it a Vox Long. And one more thing. Let's try to find something that works on a more aggressive song. Let's go back to factory default and drive drive uh, the input um, harder from Pro Tools, but less hard as far as the, you know, the emulation of the analog part of the circuitry. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Mm, okay. Let's um let's turn up 2K a little. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Let's hear it with just that exact same amount down. Baby, let me be up on a tree. So if I was doing the warm ballad thing, it'd take a little of that 2K out. But you know, at the pacing of this, I'm gonna keep that where it's at. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Let's get a little more top end out of it as if it was a plate. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Baby, let me be up on a tree. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's check that out in the mix. Baby, let me be up on a tree. I can get you one. That, you know what? In a dense mix, I feel like we could you drive that input a little harder. Baby, let me be up on a tree. I can get you what you want. I'll get. I like that. Okay, so we're gonna call that Joe C. Vox. If I could spell Vox Two. Okay, cool. Just for the record, you know, there's other videos out about this hardware unit. So if you want to watch that and learn more about the design of it and how it works, that's great. The mono drive obviously sums the signal to mono to where it, it drives the, the tank uh, evenly on both sides. And of course, the mono return is self-explanatory. If we, there's sometimes on some low, you know, some R&B, vibey, moody stuff where I will use a spring re- reverb on the vocals in mono because I want that that little buzz, buzz right behind the uh, right behind the lead vocalist. I don't want the stereo spread. Maybe I use um, a little bit of stereo plate in the choruses or something, but in the in the verses, I like that mono thing right behind them. So that that don't overlook that. That's that could be a, a cool feature for you on on certain mixes, some hip hop and some things like that. Here's the thing when it comes to reverb for me is that I, like most of you, probably overwhelmingly use some of the go-to normal things. You know, the Lexicon 480, Bercastis, TC6000s, you know, plates, halls, rooms. And for good reason, they work and they sound amazing. And our ears are like already kind of expecting that in a lot of music. But I will say that more and more, I find myself wanting one or two 
oddball things uh, that fit. Uh, and springs aren't an oddball by any any stretch of the imagination because they're such a staple on, on electric guitars. But that said, putting springs on other things uh, like lead vocals, drums, pianos, um, I find myself doing that more and more all the time over the years to do something different than what I um, expect and maybe what the listener expects or what everyone other, you know, what other, every other engineer in the world is doing. Um, so I, 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 you know, I, I can see this working into my routine in, in ways to try to create some interest and do some things different than everyone else is doing it. Uh, in addition to using it on electric guitars, because obviously you, you can make it a very classic sounding spring if you want to. So anyway, congratulations, Audioscape. Welcome to the plug-in world. Can't wait to see what else you have in store for us in coming years. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Happy mixing. Mm-hmm. 